Hello everyone, Pentax Tips here, and today we have ourselves a K1000 for an overview training video. First off, the K1000 was issued in 1976 and was so well built and popular that it had one of the longest production runs in all film camera history, eventually being discontinued in 1997. The K1000 was the fifth and last of the K-series cameras, which was unveiled just the year prior, 1975. The K1000 was billed as the affordable option within the K-series, the other cameras being designed for more advanced users and contained fancier features. Having said that, the K1000 contains just stripped down, only simple, clean, basic features in an incredibly solid body. Man, you could hammer a nail with this unit, with many surviving copies still operating completely as expected with little or no maintenance. These K-series cameras were the first Pentax cameras to sport the newly designed bayonet K-mount. All prior Pentax 35mm cameras instead contained a screw mount. This new bayonet allowed for much quicker and easier lens changes over the previous screw mounts. The bayonet also encouraged further development of lens camera communication opportunities over the prior mechanical aperture pushpin operations. There are multiple varieties of the K1000 with differing origins of manufacturing countries, and therefore build qualities. However, all models operate the same. We're going to cover all the features of the K1000, so be sure to check the timestamps to jump to specific topics. Looking at this version of the K1000, for the front of the camera, we have the prominent Asahi Pentax branding in addition to the Asahi Optical Company logo engraved at the front of the pentaprism housing. Just to the side, we see the model name K1000. We have metal strap lugs on each side of the camera, and a single flash sync terminal near the side of the camera box on one side, and the lens release lever on the other side. As mentioned, the K1000 was one of the very first cameras to contain the venerable K-mount. In fact, any K-mount lens with an aperture ring can be used perfectly fine on this camera. And with a cheap, genuine adapter, the massive entire catalog of M42 lenses can also be used with the K1000. See the section later on, stop down metering to learn how to complete that process. To remove the lens, press down the release button and rotate to pop off the lens. To reattach the lens, match up the dots on the lens in the camera body, insert the lens bayonet, and rotate until you hear a click. The back of the camera is very simple, containing the eye level viewfinder, camera film back door, and depending on your version of the K1000, another Asahi Optical Company engraving. The bottom of the camera contains a regular tripod screw mount, the film rewind release button, and a battery under this screw-on cover. Open the cover with a coin. The K1000 uses a single, readily available, 1.5 volt alkaline battery called LR44, or any equivalent. The positive plus sign needs to face out away from the camera. However, the K1000 contains a completely mechanical shutter. The battery is only used to power the light meter. So if you have no batteries or your light meter is broken, you can still take perfectly fine photos if you know your exposure settings from either personal experience or by using an external light meter. Looking at the top of the camera, we have our film rewind dial here with a little fold away crank. The dial shows a directional arrow indicating which direction to rewind the film. Gripping the sides of the dial and pulling up two positions will release the film back. Here we have the engraved camera serial number. Up top we have a flash sync contact hot shoe. Now we have the main dial. This dial sets both our shutter speed from one second to one thousandth of a second and our ASA. If we grip the sides of the dial and pull up, we can rotate the inset dial to indicate our film speed. This X next to the one sixtieth of a second marks our flash sync speed. So ensure to have your shutter selected to this speed when utilizing an external flash. There's also a B for bulb mode on the dial. That allows us to take long exposure photography. The shutter will stay open for as long as we keep the shutter button pressed down. We've got our film advance lever along with an inset frame counter that resets when you open the film back. We have a film advance status indicator, just a little black dot hidden away here that turns red when the film is advanced and the shutter is ready to fire. 
And of course we have our shutter button with an internal screw thread to receive a remote trigger cable. Loading film in a K1000 is super straightforward. First, set the ASA dial on your camera to that of the film speed that you're loading into the camera. Very important step, don't forget. Pull upwards two positions on the rewind crank to release the film back. Take your film and insert the canister on the left side and push that rewind crank back down and into the film canister. Pull the film across the guide rails and insert the leader firmly into the slot in the take-up spool. Now repeatedly advance the film and fire the shutter until the take-up sprockets engage with the film perforations. You can now close the door and the camera back pressure plate will hold the film flat to the image plane. You can now advance the film and release the shutter, repeating until the frame indicator is set to zero. This advances you beyond the film exposed while you loaded the film. You can also tell your film is loaded correctly by the rewind crank rotating counterclockwise while you advance to the next frame. The K1000 is a manual exposure camera. However, once you have the basics down, it is a very simple process. If you're new to photography, link below is a video with an overview to the exposure triangle, the basics on how to achieve the proper brightness and characteristics of your image. Now to take a shot, reminder to have the ASA set to that of the film speed loaded into your camera. Adjust your shutter speed accordingly to your ambient conditions, a longer shutter speed for darker conditions and a faster speed for brighter conditions. We'll come back to this step a little bit later if you need more or less light for your exposure. Now, remove the lens cap. Removing the lens cap activates the camera's light meter. Remember to reattach the cap when you are not ready to take a shot or else you'll kill the battery. Now, viewfinder to your eye, you'll frame your scene and manually focus. Still looking through the viewfinder, on the right side of the frame is a matchstick light meter needle. The game will be to balance that needle in the middle. When the needle points up, we are overexposed, and when the needle points down, we are underexposed. Now, we are going to rotate our aperture ring on the lens, while viewing the light meter needle through the viewfinder, stopping when we have successfully balanced the needle. If we cannot balance the needle, no matter what aperture we've selected, we need to go back and adjust our shutter speed to acquire the necessary light. Once we are happy with our exposure settings, we can now release the shutter. Manually focusing is pretty difficult. A brighter image in the viewfinder assists a photographer with seeing and acquiring accurate focus. Therefore, it is best to focus with a lens aperture as wide open as possible. Camera manufacturers have innovated in the automation of having to stop down your aperture to acquire the proper depth of field and associated exposure with a little lever coupler on the rear of the K-mount. This allows for what's called open aperture metering. However, lenses without this aperture coupler, such as M42 screw mount lenses, although can be used on the K1000, will need to utilize a technique called stop-down metering in order to achieve accurate exposures. To demonstrate this process, I'll insert our genuine M42 to K-mount adapter by lining up the dots on the adapter and mount and rotating until you hear a click. Now you can screw on the M42 lens. Now, frame and focus your scene with a wide open aperture, but you will have to manually stop down the lens to the desired aperture before you read your light meter and adjust your settings. This will potentially cause the image in your viewfinder to become very dark, making it more difficult to frame and focus. So make sure to have a good read on your focus subject and some physical body anchors for your framing before you stop down, adjust your exposure, and fire your shot. To remove the M42 adapter, simply pinch the retention clip and rotate counterclockwise to release the adapter. As a reminder, the K1000's light meter is activated the second the cap is removed from the lens. That is, light entering the camera will activate the meter. Ensure to recap the lens after shooting so that your meter is deactivated and you will avoid needlessly draining your battery power. To check the battery status, or to see if the light meter is even functioning, set your shutter speed dial to the bulb position and set the ASA dial to read 100. Now look through the viewfinder and look at the indication of the light meter's needle. If the needle is pointing straight up and holding steady, then you have a good battery. However, if the needle drops down, then it may indicate a dead battery. 
If the needle doesn't move at all, then it may indicate a bad light meter. You will know you've reached the end of your film roll when you attempt to advance the film and resistance is felt and the lever will not complete a full cycle. The indicator dot will stay black, indicating that a full cycle was not completed. If your frame counter is functional, you will hopefully be indicating that you're at the end of the roll too. Press the rewind release button on the bottom plate and flip open the crank on the film rewind dial. Now crank down on it in the direction indicated until you feel that the tension releases and you hear the film leader roll back into the canister. You can now pull up that rewind crank up two positions to release the film back door. You'll also notice that the frame counter has automatically reset. Keeping the rewind crank up at the first position will allow you to reach in and extract your rewound film canister, ready for development. Thank you for joining us on this K1000 overview training. If you like this content and you want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Thanks.